Welcome to the community of St. Peter Claver, especially to all guests joining us today. God resides in each of us. Please recognize his presence in the people around you with a warm welcome. Jesus tells the crowd that whoever follows him must take up his or her cross. Listening to today's readings, let us reflect on how our faith both challenges us to do more and comforts us as we act in the Lord's name. No one likes to be disturbed by the sounds of a cell phone, so please silence your phones for the duration of the Mass. Our priest celebrant today is Father Louis. Please rise and raise your voices as we sing our gathering song at the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess him, King of glory now. Jesus is Lord, King of glory now. He emptied himself as a slave yet free, came in human likeness for you and for me. In human likeness for you and for me. Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess him, King of glory now. Jesus is Lord, King of glory now. He humbled himself and obeyed God's will on a cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God. My brothers and sisters, I have greatly sinned. In my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through the fall, through my fall, through my most grievous fall, therefore I ask the most merited virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray prayerfully to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to 
Upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy, grant that we may serve you with all our heart, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebuilt, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. He is near who upholds my right. If anyone wishes to oppose me, let us appear together. Who disputes my right? Let that man confront me. See, the Lord God is my help. Who will prove me wrong? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Distress and sorrow. 
and I called upon the name of the Lord. Oh, Lord, save my life. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Gracious is the Lord and just. Yes, our God is merciful. The Lord keeps the little ones. I was brought low and he saved me. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. For he has freed my soul from death. My eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I shall walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. A reading from the letter of St. James. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister has nothing to wear and has no food for the day, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat well. But you do not give them the necessities of the body. What good is it? So also faith of itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Indeed, someone might say, you have faith and I have works. Demonstrate your faith to me without works, and I will demonstrate my faith to you from my works. The word of the Lord. to me and I to the world. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples set out for the villages of Caesarea Philippi. Along the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? They said in reply, John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others one of the prophets. And he asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter said in reply, you are the Christ. Then he, then he warned them not to tell anyone about him. He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and rise after three days. He spoke this openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. At this, he turned around 
and looking, looking at his disciples, rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. He summoned the crowd with his disciples and said to them, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and that of the gospel will save it. The Gospel of the Lord. In our Gospel today, Jesus asks his disciples, first he asks them, who do people say that I am? And they respond, you know, people think you're one of the prophets. And then Jesus asks his disciples after, who do you say that I am? And Peter here replies that you are the Christ. That's a good question to reflect on of Jesus asking us, who do you say that I am? And it's good for us because it, it defines our relationship with God. It defines our faith. It shows us where we're at. And, for, and there, all of us will have different answers probably. For some, we might focus on Jesus to us as God, as Lord, or teacher, savior, friend, king, healer, shepherd, and the list can go on and on, depending on, on each of us um, individually. But I think one thing that everyone could say is that, um, because just from even being here at Mass, is that one of our answers to that question, if Jesus asks us, who do you say that I am, is that Jesus is someone that I love. Jesus is someone that I follow or I'm a disciple of. That I, that I follow their example. And in the end of the gospel today, Jesus says, whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. And so if Jesus is someone that we, all, that we truly love, which I think he is for all of us in here too, to a certain extent, that we, that we want to be disciples of or are disciples of, then we have to make sure we do what we, he says here. We have to follow him. We have to deny ourselves and take up our cross in order to follow Jesus. If we say that we love Jesus, we have to show it with our actions. We cannot just say that we love him and, and act the opposite. Just as how if someone says that they love their spouse or, or they love their, their mother or, or, or father or, or their sibling or their friend, then they wouldn't just be 100% just nasty toward them and just treat them really poorly. Because then that wouldn't, they don't, maybe they wouldn't really, maybe they don't really love them if that's how they treat them. They don't show that they love them through their actions. And in a similar way, if we truly love Christ, we have to show it through how we act. We have to make sure that we're loving as best we can. We're not going to be perfect, but we have to put that effort out. We have to do things that show that we love Jesus. If we say that we love Jesus, we have to act like it. And I remember uh, one time, uh, many years ago, I was helping out at this one church, and it's when I was a seminarian, and um, I was in my little office there, and um, I think the priest, one of the priests there was, um, I think he was interviewing um, the, like some maybe eighth graders, I think, um, that were going to be in confirmation. Um, so it was like a confirmation interview before they entered, something along those lines. And I could overhear from, from his office the conversation um, with this one particular um, um, child and, and their mom. And I wasn't eavesdropping, I could just overhear. But, because um, the doors were open. But anyways, um, it wasn't like a private conversation or anything, but I remember the priest asked a few questions and then he asked this, this, um, this child, this, this, well, it's not a child, it's a, still a, a teenager. He asked this teenager, um, okay, where, you know, you could be honest, where, where do you have God as a priority in your life? Um, you know, where, where are you at with that, with your faith? And this, and this uh, teenager said, you know what, God is the most important to me in my life. He's my number one priority. Um, and the priest said, okay, that's really good. 
And then he asked, okay, um, you know, where do you have, like, going to Sunday Mass as your priority? And then this teenager once again said, you know, um, you know, God is my number one priority, so, like, going to Sunday Mass is super important for me. Um, it's, like, my number one priority. So the priest again said, oh, okay, that's, that's really good to hear. And then he asked him, oh, um, so do you go to Mass every Sunday? And the child said, oh, yeah, I go to Mass every Sunday unless I have baseball. And I, and I don't, I, I'm sure, I'm sure whoever they are, I don't remember who they are. I don't even remember if they remember baseball or softball, but I'm sure they're doing fine now. But, and I'm sure they didn't realize what they said. But I remember I almost burst out laughing from my office. Thank God I did it. But, because he, I think he really thought Jesus was his number one priority. But it was baseball. Just from his actions, he didn't realize it, but he's saying, you know, Unless I have baseball, that means baseball is above of God for him. Which sometimes that happens for us. But the thing is, we have to make sure that our actions show that we do love Christ. That if we truly love Christ, he's a priority in our lives. That if we truly have Jesus as the one we follow, if we're truly disciples of Jesus, we have to put forth that effort in making sure that what we say, what we do matches what we say. And so that's something that to reflect on today as we think of that question that Jesus asked his disciples, but he also asks us as well. Who do you say that I am? And I think we can all confidently answer to an extent that Jesus is someone that we love, someone that we follow. And if that's who he is, then we have to make sure that what we do, how we act, how we carry ourselves, follows with our love for Christ. Please remain seated. Um, uh, for the last maybe two, two three Sundays, uh, we were mentioning a candle um, to take home, to decorate, to bring back this, this weekend at um, whatever mass, Sunday mass you come to. Um, so we'll be leading with this um, candle ceremony um, right now. And this real, just really quick, um, what this is, is a prayer that we are offering for those that... Um, we have lost or have suffered or for our families that are affected by the coronavirus, this pandemic, but also on this anniversary of the 9-11 um, terrorist attacks. Um, we're also offering our prayers for all those affected by these events and those that have passed away um, on, this, on this day at, or the anniversary of 9-11 20 years ago. So, um, so now I'll read this. So now we will be doing the candle lighting ceremony in commemoration of all the lives lost during this pandemic and the lives of those who perished from the 9-11 terror attacks 20 years ago. Um, so those, I ask those who have a memorial candle that you brought um, to please come forward. Well, how we'll be doing this is that the ushers and volunteers will, will be lighting your candle. Um, so if you could just bring them up to the front right now. Um, and for those that maybe might not have a candle, um, that's okay, we can still offer our prayers in um, the silence of our hearts um, as God still hears the prayers even if you don't have a candle. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is once you have your candle lit from one of the ushers, please place them on this top step, um, hopefully more towards the middle so that they're grouped together so they're not too spread out. And as we're doing that, I'll be reading um, this little bit and then I'll be doing the prayer. So if you could just place them on this top step. So the candle has a strong significance in our faith because the candle represents Christ. I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The candle also goes hand in hand with prayer. It is a symbol of the light of faith. It burns as an offering of thanksgiving or petition. As a parish, we have, we're, we have lit these candles or are lighting these candles to offer the prayers of our parish family. We will remember in an especially 
in a special way all of the losses that we have experienced during this pandemic and all who have suffered in this pandemic, as well as those who are affected and have lost their lives from the 9-11 attacks. During this coronavirus pandemic, many are tempted to have fear, anxiety, and perhaps even despair. Some have lost their precious lives. Some have lost those whom they love. Some have suffered through the debilitating effects of their, this illness. And some have lost their jobs and their income because of this pandemic. Every crisis in life is also an opportunity to turn to our beloved Savior in trust and complete abandonment so as to rest in His merciful hands. To rest in the hands of God means we are secure despite the uncertainty of life. It means we are free to love God and others despite the challenges we face. It means we raise our eyes to heaven rather than look down in fear. And so we pray, most merciful and triune God, we come to you in our weakness. We come to you in our fear. We come to you with trust, for you alone are our hope. We place before you the disease present in our world. We turn to you in our time of need. Bring wisdom to doctors. Give understanding to scientists. Endow caregivers with compassion and generosity. Bring healing to those who are ill. Protect those who are most at risk. Give comfort to those who, are, who have lost a loved one from the coronavirus and from the 9-11 terrorist attacks. Welcome those who, who have died into your eternal home. Stabilize our communities, unite us in our compassion, remove all fear from our hearts, fill us with confidence in your care, and make our church a place of comfort and consolation for all your people. Jesus, we trust in you. Jesus, we trust in you. Jesus, we trust in you. Amen. Um, and, and we'll be leaving these candles up here um, as a symbol of our offering of our prayers for the rest of Mass. And once Mass is over, um, we ask that you please um, come up um, to bring your candle back home. And that way you can light your candle um, at home after um, whenever you would like to offer these prayer intentions that we had offered today. Um, you can do so at, at your own home as well um, after Mass today. I now invite up those um, participating in the RCIA dismissal to please come forward. Dear friends, today the Lord Jesus asks you the question, who do you say that I am? As you spend time now reflecting on the word of God, ponder that question. You have gradually grown in your relationship with the Lord Jesus. Today, you are given the opportunity to ponder who the Lord Jesus is in your own life. Invite the Lord into your heart and pray for wisdom and strength. Know of our prayerful support as you go forth. We anticipate the day when you will remain here to share in the Eucharistic banquet. Now go in peace. that you all stand for the prayers of the faithful. We come to the Lord as children, confident of God's love and forgiveness. That, that the church speak for the oppressed throughout the world and reap a bountiful harvest of justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we remember all touched by the tragic events of September 11, 2001, and may people of all nations build renewed urgency to work for world peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit be with all who embark on a new school year. May they grow in love of learning and joy in the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions of Claire Delto, and Michelle Lowry, 
May our Lord in his mercy bless them today and always. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of Ode Tessa Apeyanis, Willie Gedang, Bob and Mary McGee, and John H. Webb, that they experience the resurrection of Christ into an eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick and all in need of healing, that they receive grace and strength, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have gone before us and await the kingdom, especially Brian Hassett, Sherman Van Dyke, and Lieutenant Cody Traber, that they find rest from their labors and peace in the loving embrace of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear God of peace, you are near to all who call on you. Hear the prayers of our humble and contrite heart. We ask all of these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our music during the presentation of the gifts is Christ in Me Arise. Sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice, sacrifice of your hands for the grace and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His soul church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these your servants' offerings, <clears throat> that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim.
are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Jose our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am now worthy that you should enter into my roof. For I will say the word, and my soul shall be One breath. 
Let us pray. <clears throat> May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies, so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for a few announcements. Um, first, actually, I invite up those bringing communion to the sick or homebound to um, so please come forward. May the Lord bless you in your ministry as you bring the body of our Lord Jesus Christ to those who are unable to be present with us here today in this most holy Eucharist. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We have a few announcements. The first announcement is, if I can find it, oh there, okay. Um, the first announcement is that um, this is the last week to register for elementary faith formation. Um, so if you have, if you want to sign up um, your young one um, for our faith formation this upcoming year, please make sure you do so uh, by contacting the faith formation office as soon as possible. Um, next, volunteers are still needed to help with all levels of faith formation, elementary school, middle school, high school, and RCIA. So if you feel called by the Holy Spirit to share your faith with others, or just have a few questions and might be interested, um, please contact the faith, for our faith Formation Office for this as well. Um, next, our ultra server ministry will be uh, returning soon. Um, so all boys and girls in grades 3 to 12 who have made their first communion are welcome to join. Uh, the bulletin has more information on this, um, but um, even for those that are registered before, since we're starting from scratch um, because of the pandemic, um, please register your young one um, if they're interested. Um, if they're not interested, you can force them to, that's fine. Um, in, if they live under your roof, it's your rules. And um, next, our last announcement is um, please take this weekend's bulletin for imp important details regarding these upcoming events. 
Uh, so if you have any questions or interest in any of these following events, um, please look in the bulletin for more details. Um, sep September 19th, we have a Chaplet of Divine Mercy in Remembrance for Father Adrian San Juan. September 20th, we have Adult Faith Formation. Um, this is the presentation of Bishop Barrett's The Creed Part 1. September 21st, um, we have a return of the Eucharistic Adoration Information Meeting. And lastly, um, we have a early bird special rate uh, with, for the sign up for the November 1st Charity Golf Tournament sponsored by our Knights of Columbus. Thank you. Please, oh, and the one more announcement. Um, after um, we end Mass, um, please feel free to come up and grab your candle um, if you have left one up here to take home with you. Um, and that way you can offer, the, um, you can light the candle in prayer um, at your own home as well. Um, so please stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks. Thanks. Our closing hymn, America the Beautiful. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for ways of grain, for purple mountains, majesties, above the fruit in place. Grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Oh, beautiful for pilgrim feet who stand in passion stress, author of their voice. Confirm thy soul in self.